Good afternoon. On behalf of Bishop Jenke, the Bishop of Peoria, and Father Alexander Millar, the rector of this church, I welcome you all this joyful afternoon to the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception. What a great honor and joy it is to be here together with the friends and family of Bishop-elect Lou Tilka to celebrate his ordination. I'm Philip Lee, the Director of Divine Worship, as well as the Master of Ceremonies. Just a few announcements for the liturgy to go more smoothly today. You're kindly reminded to silence all cell phones and other noisy electronic devices. Flash photography is permitted today, but please remain in your seats to do so. There will be no offertory or gift procession today, but if you wish to make an offering, there will be baskets as you leave the cathedral. You may put any cards you have for Bishop Blue there as well. For the distribution of Holy Communion, please follow the directions of the ushers. Those sitting on the side here, the first row will go towards the back and then down the center to receive. After the side is finished, those sitting in the front will then go. Again, please follow the directions of the ushers. Those in the balcony, you'll be directed to come down again by an usher. As you leave at the end of Mass today, due to the inability to hold a reception, we have gift bags for everyone. Please feel free to grab one on your way out. As we are a singing community, all of the music for today's liturgy can be found in the programs available in the vestibule. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. On behalf of Bishop Daniel Jenke, the Bishop of Peoria, I welcome all of you who are with us here today or who are viewing this event remotely. I am Monsignor Philip Halfacre, Vicar General for the Diocese of Peoria. In a particular way, I welcome our Metropolitan, His Eminence Cardinal Blaise Supic, the Apostolic Nuncio, His Excellency Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the visiting bishops and visiting priests and deacons and religious, the family and friends of Bishop-elect Louis Tilka, and all who have come from near and far in a spirit of solidarity and fraternity to be with us here today. I'm saddened to have to announce to you that Bishop Jenke is not able to be present. He was unknowingly exposed to the coronavirus on several recent occasions in the course of his Episcopal ministry, and upon the advice of our health care partners, is under self-quarantine. He is, of course, greatly saddened to be unable to be present at this important and historic event. In his name, I welcome all of you, and I thank you for your presence here today. We will, of course, be keeping Bishop Jenke in our prayer, and as we offer sacrifice to God in this Eucharist and call upon the gift of the Holy Spirit on Louis Tilka, we also remember that the Lord's Spirit comes to each one of us in the power of the forgiveness of sins. Let us call upon God's mercy and ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. My thoughts, and my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, who out of an abundance of your untold grace alone choose to set your servant and priest Lewis over your church on this day, grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things he may direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak, I am too young. But the Lord answered me, say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you. Then. The Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro. 
Queridos hermanos, sed moderados y sobrios para poder orar. Ante todo, mantened en tensión el amor mutuo, porque el amor cubre la multitud de los pecados. Ofreceos mutuamente hospitalidad sin protestar. Que cada uno con el don que ha recibido se ponga al servicio de los demás. Como buenos administradores de la múltiple gracia de Dios. El que toma la palabra, que hable palabra de Dios. El que se dedica al servicio, que lo haga en virtud del encargo recibido de Dios. Así, Dios será glorificado en todo, por medio de Jesucristo, a quien corresponden la gloria y el poder, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Palabra de Dios. be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To you, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord.
Most Reverend Father, the Church of Peoria asks you to ordain this priest, Louis Tilka, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Holy See? We have. Let it be read. Your Eminence, Cardinal Sopich, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Chicago. Your Excellency, Bishop, Archbishop Listeki. Your Excellency, Bishop Daniel Jenkike, I greet you where you are because I know that we are following us. Dear brother Archbishops and Bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Church in Peoria, dear friends, in this beautiful Cathedral of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception, I am happy to join you as Father Luis Tilka is consecrated as Coadjutor Bishop of Peoria. Father Tilka has distinguished himself as a pastor, most recently as St. Julie Billiard Parish in Tinley Park and as head of the Presbyterial Council in the GH Diocese of Chicago. I want to acknowledge the wonderful ministry of Bishop Jenke in Peoria over these past 18 years, despite the physical suffering he has endured in recent years. He took great pains to oversee the restoration of this beautiful cathedral. He takes both humility and courage to ask for help and Bishop Jenke has shown both. Moreover, in asking for a coadjutor bishop, he has placed the love of his flock and the evangelizing mission of the church before his own interest, offering us a model of pastoral charity. Your Excellency, thank you. We all thank you. The directory of the Pascual Minister of Bishops reads, I quote, when circumstances suggest the Holy See may appoint a coadjutor bishop, the diocesan bishop should welcome him gladly in a spirit of faith and should promote an, an effective communion by virtue of their joint episcopal responsibility, establishing an authentic partnership which, with a coadjutor, should be particularly cordial and fraternal for the good of the diocese." End of quote. I'm sure that this is the type of reception you will receive from Bishop Jenke and the people of God in Peoria, a reception that is filled with joy, gladness, and a true spirit of fraternity and cooperation. Indeed, you will be stronger together as you bring the joy of the gospel in this diocese and its people under the protection of Mary Immaculate. And now, with great joy, I will read for you a translation of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment. This letter will be shown to you later by the, the bishop. It is signed by Pope Francis. It is the letter that Pope Francis gives to you to show to the people that you are indeed a true bishop and a true coadjutor bishop. Don't forget about that. Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our beloved son, Luis, actually I noticed that you write Luis like in French, isn't it? Louis. <laughs> That's interesting. Louis Tilka. <laughs> now, from now on, you will, you will call him like that. No, not Louis, because Louis Tilka. <laughs> Louis. From the clergy of the Archdiocese of Chicago, and until now, chair there of the Archdiocese and Priest Council, as well as pastor. 
appointed coadjutor bishop of Peoria, greetings and apostolic blessing. We, who are guided by evangelical charity and pastoral solicitude, are obligated to provide for the governance of the universal Catholic family and to listen clearly to the requests of its chief shepherds, who, in order to pursue the greater good of the faithful and trusted to their care, seek assistance for, from us. Accordingly, we have decided to grant the petition of our venerable brother, Daniel Robert Jenke, a member of the Congregation of Holy Cross, who requested that a coadjutor bishop be given to him. At this time, it is precisely you, beloved son, who are before our eyes, as one who has greatly acquired the appropriate qualities, as one whose varied ministry carried out up to now, we have carefully considered, and consequently, as one to whom we do not hesitate to entrust this office. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by virtue of the fullness of our apostolic authority, by uh, this letter we appoint you, Coadjutor Bishop of Peoria, conferring upon you equally all the rights and obligations which are connected with the same dignity in accordance with the sacred canons. As to your episcopal ordination, you may receive it outside the city of Rome from any Catholic bishop, the liturgical laws being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity towards us and our successors. Next, you must take care to inform the clergy and the people of your diocese about this, your appointment, so that from this time forward, they may acknowledge you and willingly be prepared to attend to their duties as sons, daughters, and disciples. Finally, beloved son, may the love of Christ and zeal for his kingdom so impel you that you may devote all your attention to cultivating and planting in the field of the Lord, so that, as a result, you may take delight as you render it ever more fertile, ever more fruitful, filled with hope for the future. Given at Rome, at the Lateran, on the 11th day of the month of May, in the year of the Lord 2020, the eighth of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis. While our good friend Bishop Jenke sadly could not be present today, I want to thank him and his collaborators for the kind welcome that they have offered us in this beautiful cathedral dedicated to Our Lady. Admittedly, our gathering is smaller than normal circumstances allow, but I know that many others are joining us virtually. Nonetheless, 
we are blessed to have Bishop Tilka's father, whom I'm told is the real Father Lou. <laughs> and he's joined by Fa Bishop Tilka's sisters, Linda, Brenda, Tisa, Patty, and their families. We remember in a special way today Bishop Tilka's sister, Mary Lou, who recently passed away, and of course your dear mother, Norma. Louis, I like that. You have chosen the Great Commission as your motto, which is reflected in the gospel just proclaimed. Yet notice that before Christ charges those first disciples to go make disciples of all nations, he first draws them back to Galilee. Why Galilee? What is, why is Galilee the point of reference for the new mission that they are to undertake? Two things come to mind. First, it was along the shores of Lake Galilee that they encountered Jesus to the point that their entire lives changed. It was in Galilee, where they first experienced, as Pope Francis describes in The Joy of the Gospel, the joy of being set free from sin, sorrow, inner emptiness, and loneliness. The message is clear. For them to be sustained in this new mission, they will need to return often to the joy of their life, that early and transformative encounter with Jesus that signaled his call to them. Bishop Tilka, the same is true for you. You're being called to serve as a bishop in some very challenging times for society and the church, even as you realize that you have 25 years before you reach retirement age. <laughs> remain undaunted. Return often to your Galilee moment. When you first encountered the Lord, as you thought about your future, and the Lord asked you, what are you looking for? Return often to that youthful day when you became a priest and you heard the Lord say as he did to young Jeremiah, to whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. The joy of these moments will not only shield you from discouragement and sustain you when you become weary, but will keep your proclamation of the gospel fresh and appealing to the point that others will be drawn to Christ as they witness your joy. Let your Galilee moment be a point of reference, a wellspring of joy to refresh and sustain your ministry. And a second reason, by summoning the disciples to Galilee, where he proclaimed the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, Jesus makes clear that the mission he gives to his disciples is the very one that he received from the Father. As the Father has sent me, so I send you, he told them. Jesus used the three short years of his public ministry to teach these disciples what it means to be sent, how disciples are made, and the importance of including all nations. To be, pre to be sent by the Father means remaining free to move ahead, free from any, any compromise or coercion to proclaim the truth of salvation. So too, the mission that you are undertaking, Bishop Tilka, must always be marked by the freedom of being sent. You must go freely, not relying on the approval or the applause of others, and not because your freedom has been granted to you by another agency or secured by alignments with those who happen to be in power. You are free because you've been sent. And yet knowing that you have been sent also frees you to approach those who are in power with cordiality and civility. It was also in Galilee that Jesus began to teach them to make disciples. He accompanies those he calls with respect, alerting them that the kingdom of God was breaking into the world and was within them, that God's grace was already actively calling them step by step, gradually, to receive his mercy. He taught them that discipleship is a journey 
that unfolds, and not a destination that we can claim as our own achievement. A few years ago, Pope Francis admonished a group of missionaries to be respectful of the people they were going to serve in a far-off land. Remember, the Holy Spirit was there before you arrived, he urged. The Holy Father also has warned against imposing our own timelines on God's grace, telling us to respect the divine pedagogy, lest we demand that grace comes all at once to make people superhuman with no flaws or need of ongoing conversion. Like those gathered in Galilee, Bishop Tilke, your own experience of the Lord patiently leading you on the journey of discipleship will be your guide for making disciples. Finally, Jesus' mission to the whole world, to all the nations, demands that we tear down all barriers of exclusion. Surely this means allowing your ministry in this beautiful diocese of Peoria to reach out to those who are marginalized, forgotten, dismissed by prejudice and judgmentalism. But all nations must also be taken literally. For as the Second Vatican Council reminds us, each bishop shares responsibility for the universal church in union sub umbra patri, under the shadow of Peter. This task takes on even greater significance in our day, marked by a global pandemic, threats to the environment, violations of human dignity, and a world war fought in piecemeal. It is for this reason that your bond with Peter, our Holy Father, must always remain unbroken, unquestioned, and never called into doubt. At the core of your identity as a bishop is your union with him in the common mission to all the nations. The last words of our Lord in the gospel today to those gathered in Galilee are, I'm with you always until the end of the age. You know, Bishop Tilka, that the Lord's words are true, for he has been with you in every age of your life. Always return to Galilee to strengthen your trust in his promise. by the ancient rule of the Holy Fathers, ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, my dear brother, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which are about to be passed on to you by the laying on of hands? Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of the body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and the deacons? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of God, of, of the Lord's name, to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, the strangers, and to all who are in need? Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. And do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
Dearly beloved, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the Church will grant an abundance of His grace for this chosen one. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Mary of the Immaculate Conception, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint James, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Thomas, pray for us. Saint James, pray for us. Saint Philip, pray for us. Saint Bartholomew, pray for us. Saint Matthew, pray for us. Saint Simon, Pray for us, Saint Jude. Pray for us, Saint Matthias. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, Saint Stephen. Pray for us, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us, Saint Lawrence. Pray for us, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us, Saint Agnes. Pray for us, Saint Gregory. Pray for us, Saint Augustine. Pray for us, Saint Athanasius. Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Martin, pray for us, Saint Benedict, pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us, Saint John Vianney, pray for us, Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful service to your church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless 
us sanctify and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace, through Christ our Lord. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies, God of all consolation, 
who dwell on high, who look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who laid down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundations of the world were pleased to be glorified in those that you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one that power which is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day. May he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decrees, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church now and forever and ever. May God, who has made you a share of the high priest of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity adorned with, un uh, adorned with undefiled faith. Preserve, unblemish the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre 
and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God. that chair away. We can go back to our place here.
Ready? Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented for your church and for Louis, your servant and bishop, become an offering acceptable to you, and for the good of the flock may he whom you have raised up among your people to be high priest, be endowed by your gift with apostolic virtues through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. 
and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying out of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, and to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with our blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, and me, your unworthy servant, who have been ordained today as shepherd for the Church of Peoria, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of the
I do?
front nail of your Italian may be about to fall off. Okay, thank you. Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, O Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in Lewis, your servant and bishop, that he may serve you wordly in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal words of a faithful servant through Christ our Lord.
be seated. As we conclude this beautiful liturgy of my ordination as coadjutor bishop of the Diocese of Peoria, I want to take a brief moment to try to express my heart to you. I am filled with great joy and tremendous gratitude today. The great joy comes from knowing that the Holy Spirit continues to work in the church, gathering us all together to participate in this moment of grace for the Diocese of Peoria and in my own life. The profound gratitude I feel in this moment is for so many blessings that God has shown me. I am thankful for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his extraordinary shepherding of our church and for his confidence and trust in me, calling me to serve as Bishop of Peoria. I pledge my unending fidelity to him as a successor of Peter, and I entrust him daily to the Lord in my prayers. I am grateful for the guidance and the support of Cardinal Supich for his encouragement to me and the example of service to the church. I have learned a great deal from him these last six years that he, that he has served as my archbishop. I am thankful for the presence here today and for the generous service of the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre. Two years ago, I was privileged to sit next to him at lunch for the new auxiliary bishops of Chicago and in the conversation over that meal, I was so impressed by the love he has for the church and his willingness to offer himself so generously to all of us. I am thankful for Bishop Janke, our local shepherd for the last 18 years, for his warm and gracious welcome to me, his dedication to this local church, which he loves so deeply, and the reassurance he has offered me in this transition. I am filled with gratitude for my family who are the greatest gift that God has blessed me with. As I have said as I began each of my priestly assignments, you are not getting just me, you are getting my family as well. And this is now where I apologize in advance for them. And I suggest that you may have wanted to vet them more than you vetted me. But in all honesty, my family means the world to me. They have always given me unconditional love and support. And I know in my heart that today, Mom and Mary Lou are smiling down upon us as they very much are with us here today. I too am thankful for the many close friends and parishioners who have and continue to enrich my life. Your presence today, both in this magnificent cathedral and virtually, touches me deeply, knowing that we will always walk together on this journey of faith. I am so grateful for all who worked so hard to make this celebration happen. You have been so generous with your time and your gifts. Lastly, I am so thankful for the church in the Diocese of Peoria, especially her priests. From the moment I first received word of my appointment, you have all been in my prayers and in my heart. And your warm welcome and the love and support that you have already shown to me and my family, especially in the difficulty of my sister's cancer battle and her going home to God, has proven the goodness of God that I see in you. Mis hermanos y hermanas, estoy lleno de gozo y agradecimiento por las bendiciones de Dios en este día. No tengo mucho español, pero quiero compartir que mi gozo y agradecimiento incluye a ustedes, quien hablan español. Ojalá que en el futuro ustedes puedan Ayudarme a hablar mejor para conocer sus corazones y fe en nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Que Dios te bendiga. 
This joy and this gratitude is a treasure that I will hold forever. It also is what inspires me to go forward. Together, walking the road of faith, recognizing the grace of Jesus walking with us, relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, following the example of the Blessed Mother, let us take up anew our own mission the Lord has given to us. Let us go and make disciples. Before the final blessing, I want to once again thank all of you for your hospitality and gracious welcome today, and we will continue to keep Bishop Jenke in our prayers. I mentioned during the homily that uh, uh, Bishop uh, Tilka can look forward to celebrating his 25th anniversary, even at a young age. Uh, and a good example for that uh, for us this week, this year, is our Apostolic Nuncio, who marks his 25 years as a bishop and 50 as a priest, and he will be gathering with family and friends soon in order to celebrate that. So Archbishop Pierre, congratulations to you. Thank you for your service. May the Lord bless you and keep you as he has willed to set you as high priest over his people. So may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. Amen. May he grant that the clergy and the people he has chosen to unite by his gracious help be happily governed by his providence and your stewardship for many years to come. May they obey God's commandments freed from adversity, and may they abound in all that is good, submitting in faith to your ministry, so that they may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age, and with you be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.